Welcome back to First Ring Daily, where Miracast is just no longer working. No longer working? Yeah, I mean, we had a good run. I'm going to have to adjust some of the <laughs> settings here. Did we? Did we have a good run? So if you're usually looking forward to the lovely background that I have back here, uh, you're out of luck today. Because It's ready to connect. And it won't. And now I'm completely washed out, which is, you know... Can I recommend a little technology called Chromecast? You'll like this one. It, it's like Miracast, but it will hold on to your hat here. But it works. If I, what if I try to do... So usually I just tap this little button that says connect a Microsoft display adapter, which I'm using a Microsoft display adapter. Mm -hmm. um, and it says going to connect. And you can see here... So, well, it's got little dots. Little yeah, dots. Connect, connecting to... That. Oh, whoop. Oh, 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 oh. oh, look at that. Wow. Wow. Well, I forget everything I ever complained about. <laughs> until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, until 10 minutes from now. There we go. See, look uh, at that. Just... Now I'm not so washed out. I do need a haircut, which I was going to get this morning, Paul, but then you told me we had to do the podcast at 930. And then you told me, wait, no, it's not your thing's not until 330. And so I didn't get a haircut. And now I'm sitting here um, at 11 a.m. doing the podcast. What happened, Paul? Well, um, <laughs> time zones happened. Uh, you know, you know when you get a phone call and you look at it, and nine times out of ten, it's some random number from your time zone, from your area code, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're like, you know, it's spam and blah blah blah, whatever it was. It was like a sp my area code is six one seven, which is back in Massachusetts. Like I've kept the phone number, mm -hmm. so this one was a six one zero number, which is Pennsylvania, and we're in Dublin. And I was like, you know, I should answer this because it sounds like it might be important. And sure enough, it was for an appointment. And uh, they wanted to tell me the address to go to, blah, all the stuff. And I said, listen, I'm, I'm actually out of the country right now as we're speaking. I'll write this down. I have your number. I will look it up and I, you know, whatever. And I, mm -hmm. at that moment, put an, uh, I put the appointment into my calendar in rough form with the name of the company mm -hmm. and the time. Of course, I was in Dublin. So the time that went in was Dublin time, which is five hours off from now. So my appointment is not at 9, no, I'm sorry, what did I say, 10.30? It's at 3.30 in the afternoon because, you know, the five-hour time change. The other thing that was weird about it was when I did this, mm -hmm. I have a second appointment today. It's at noon. I've known about that one for a long time. And I was concerned that these things would be, you know, no, I said, I know, I know I have something that day. I looked at my calendar and I said, oh, no, this is hours apart. This will be fine. Because my calendar was off by five hours, and it looked like it was at a different time. Anyway, long story short. And here we are. <laughs> Look, I never claimed to be good at math. Um, I don't know. Sorry. I was trying to find, this is a random, very random question, where you can look on a device, uh, mm -hmm. specifically a Surface Pro, and it will tell you what model it is, like Pro 3. Oh, Pro. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's where it will actually say the the. Okay, so um, I don't know that it, does it ship on there. There should be a Surface app. Um, well, let's just pretend that doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know how this, you would do that otherwise. Yeah, because uh, well, the, the firmware. It, it, you know, the model number would be somewhere in the firmware. Yeah. Why do you ask? Gonna, what, well, why because ask? I got a, a, a question from a reader today. It says, hey, Brad, I don't know what actually Surface Pro model I have. It's If it's 4 or 5. That's um, amazing. Is there a way to yeah, yeah. look? And I was right, like, so let's, I, I, let's try this right now. So it's like, there's got to be a way. Into, and I went yep. to system, like about PC, and nothing happened. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But if you go to recovery and go to advanced startup, when that thing comes up, you should be able to boot into the firmware. I mean, this, I know this is a key code kind of thing you can do. <laughs> because that's, that's what well, I, I don't know. It's, it's a way. Troubleshoot advanced options. I mean, I guess uh, I probably could have grabbed his processor and that would have been able to tell me. But I was that's, like, actually, that a, would do it. Like, that there's got to be a way. You would think that they would actually like put the brand, like the model number in here somewhere. Yeah. So but, it is in the UEFI firmware, the very first thing. In fact, it says model, and then it says exactly what it is. Like in plain English. Like it's not model 10Z91. You know, it's not something stupid. Mm -hmm. It actually says this is what it is. And so what did you go to do then? 
you go to the firmware. So the easiest way is to go into settings. Um, I, that's not in front of me, but the recovery part over, you know, by Windows Update. Mm-hmm. Um, what is this? I, I'm not in front of it. No, actually, I can look at it here. I'm sorry. Um, update and security. Mm-hmm. Recovery. Uh, under advanced startup, restart now. That goes uh, to the recovery environment. And then you, I don't remember the exact steps, but it's advanced settings or something or mm-hmm. advanced something. And one of the options is to reboot into the firmware. And that'll you do, do that. It. it will tell you the model. Well, there we go. Those two, uh, yeah, nice, nice and easy. Yeah, nice and well, easy. it's it's on there. I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, I can't do that now because otherwise, I I don't I don't right, want to. Right, right. It'd be try. amazing if that like appeared up on the screen, right? But that probably would never work. Yeah, that's that's it's, asking a lot. <laughs> that's gonna well, you're rooting outside of the operating system. I mean, the thing you're using is basically an app or a service. Yeah. Speaking of an app or service, you finally got um, a new toy. Yeah, yeah. It took a lot of kicking and screaming for me to get this, which I'm not proud of or happy about. But um, yeah, I finally, you know, two weeks after everyone else got one, I got a Surface Laptop two to review. So I wrote a first impressions article. I mean, I. You know, as we've discussed in the past, I love Surface Laptop, mm-hmm. and this is something about it. Surface Book, you know, same kind of deal. It's perfect typing experience, perfect touchpad experience, beautiful screen. This one, you know, compared to Surface Book, obviously is lighter and thinner, and it's kind of nicer to carry around. Um, it is the laptop. I think I brought this in all my most recent trips. I brought it to Florida. I brought it to New York. Mm-hmm. I brought it to Paris, and then I brought it to Dublin. You know, it's nice. So the new one obviously can be had in black, which I think looks great. This kind of a, the Alcantara part is, I would say, is dark gray, not black. And it gives mm-hmm. you kind of a nice contrast with the keys. Um, obviously, no, same thing with Surface Pro, right? It's the uh, fourth or eighth generation quad core processor. Was, is the big internal change. Port situation hasn't changed. Surface Connect hasn't changed. Are you like looking at it right now? I am. I can't stop looking at it. If so, only you could hold it up so the rest of us could see. Okay. I see what you're saying. <laughs> oh, it's um, you know, it's black. Yeah, it's this. Yeah, exact same black kind of the. Yeah, it looks. It's nice. um, I think it looks nice too. You know, over here you can, you're not gonna be able to see it, but one of the weird things on Surface Laptop is this little. It's kind of a plastic band. Yep. That's for the antenna, you know, for the Wi-Fi antennas. And when we first saw that, it, you know, there was some confusion because in some photos it might look like a little bit like a port, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was like a mini, you know, um, SD card slot or something. Um, they were actually, because of the color, it's actually better hidden on the black for whatever reason. I, not a big deal. But as far as the actual form and, you know, the grill work here in the back for the venting, the, you know, the feet, the port situation, everything, it's it's identical. It's literally, it, it, it's very clearly, obviously the yeah. same exact body, which, you know, I kind of go back and forth on. I mean... I get it, I guess, but I, I think I would have gotten it better if this thing had shipped six months ago, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, frankly. Um, and I guess the other thing, you know, obviously the lack of USB C port is controversial in some circles. Um, the fact that it runs Windows 10 Home is controversial in some yeah. circles. And I, I have to say, you know, based on the information you got early this year, where they're kind of recasting Home and Pro. Mm-hmm. and uh, expanding out the features of each and everything. I don't really, I, I, the old issues I don't think really apply. There are a couple of situations, obviously if you're going to use it in a, in a managed environment, like an Active Directory type of thing, you need right. Pro. Um, Pro has the Hyper-V stuff. Pro has the ability to make BitLocker encrypted disks. Um, they work mm-hmm. on home. I, I actually think that's something they should bring to home. But um, even developers, depending on what you're doing, might not need Pro, Right. Um, if you do need virtual environments in Hyper-V, then yeah, you need you need Pro. But if you're doing like web type development or mobile mm-hmm. app, uh, well, actually mobile app development would benefit from Hyper-V too. But um, you know the instances in which people as individuals need Pro have kind of gone down over the years. So I think this is a perfectly acceptable thing. And I, I you know, you can get Pro obviously if you want it. You can buy yeah. it through the business store. You can upgrade it at ninety nine bucks, whatever. It's nice. Yeah, it's a nice machine. Good. You're a nice human sometimes. On occasion. <laughs> Am I? No, not really. Mm-hmm. Not really. I mean, um, I don't know. I, I got nothing for today. I mean, it was, 
I was so flustered. Well, here, so here's we- the theme for today. Actually, mm-hmm. you want to, if you want something to talk about, the the three the first three stories I wrote were all about how software is terrible. So yeah. the the Pixel three has a pro- has actually several problems. Google has said they're going to fix one of them. This is the the problem where you take a photo and it doesn't save it to the disk. Kind of a basic feature. Mm-hmm. Um, Apple <laughs> said it's going to fix that uh, selfie problem on the iPhone oh, yeah. X. Yep. Uh, 10s, 10s Max, and and 10R that you demonstrated, right? For my review, mm-hmm. where people kind of come out looking like a mannequin, and I think because it's all smooth looking and weird, and uh, Apple admitted this was a mistake. It's taking the wrong frame. It, it wasn't something they were trying to do to make people look better. It's just mm-hmm. a software glitch. So uh, iOS 12.1, I guess, is going to fix it. And then of course our uh, our perennial favorite Windows, um, <laughs> which was uh, released and then pulled and has been delayed, I think, uh, almost two weeks now. Um, I, I think there's a strong chance, by the way, that Windows 10 co- uh, version 18.09 comes out today again. But it could be delayed again, too, because as it turns out, there's a second data loss problem specific to this version where you're unarchiving a compressed folder, a zip file, and you're using the Microsoft built-in tool on Windows 10, and you're... Mm-hmm. You're either you're pulling files out of it and putting them into some other location, like your desktop. Yeah. If there are files in that location and in the destination that match the files in the USB, or, I'm sorry, in the uh, zip file, normally it will say, "Hey, uh, these things are the same. Yep. Did you want to overwrite it? Keep both, whatever." Doesn't do that. It just overwrites them. Fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. And, and you know, it, the notion that there might be a quality control problem over in Redmond is, uh, I think, at this point universally understood and it's uh, something i've been kind of harping on for years you just probably saw peter bright wrote a really long article that summarizes mm-hmm. everything i've been saying for, for the past three years but you know good for him but um you know i think this is it's reaching the point where i actually think the culture there has to change to fix this because there's no reward for doing that you know at microsoft there's none yep and you know remember the last time this kind of thing happened when they did the uh, the trustworthy computing initiative which is about security not reliability. Um, they had to shut down the whole thing. Like, we're not going to put any new things out. We're going to fix this. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's, I, I really feel like they need this kind of a thing. But they can't just do it the one time. By the way, did you notice I'm wearing a black Surface laptop t-shirt today? Um, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, I, I tend not to look at you. I actually look at the yellow wall behind you the entire right, podcast. You just kind of look at it. Right. Don't, don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> Um, anyway, I think Microsoft needs to fix this and, um, I hope now that pretty much everyone agrees with that statement. I mean, I think there's a huge problem here. So, you know, whatever, um, 1809 is probably going to come barreling down the pike today regardless. Mm. Um, I'm sure they'll take, you know, they'll talk a lot about how they accept feedback and they look at what's going on and they adjust the speed of the deployment and this thing will be crapped out to the world in less than 30 days. Like, you know what this is going to happen. Like, you know what's going to happen. Yep. On to greener pastures. But, yeah, I mean, that's... Yep. It is what it is. It is what it is. And um, I think the last little yep. bit of news here, which I know, Paul, you know knew about, or at least a decent amount about, uh, Terry mm-hmm. Myerson announced what he's doing next, which involves a whole lot of relaxing for six months. Uh, <laughs> yep. And which now he he's going to... Go work. Uh, actually, he's going to work. Go work with Soma Somzigar, who used to work at mm-hmm. Microsoft uh, at uh, a VC firm, and then he's also working at another company as like a floating exec or something. Where I basically think he's just going to come in, scream at people to fix things or straighten up, and then kind of go back to VC world. Um, but anyway, so he kind of he put that up on LinkedIn. I think he's really going to be a VC, is what he's doing. So yeah. and, and think about it: when you're a a, a, mul- a multi millionaire ex Microsoft, live mm-hmm. in the Seattle area, you get, probably have kids in some various schools or whatever. You don't want to move. You don't need to work, you know? Right. So what do you do? Like there are charities, there's VC type stuff. You know, these guys all kind of follow a familiar path. Um, mm-hmm. So good for him. You know, it must be nice to have a uh, hundred million times as much money as I have. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I don't have that luxury, you know. He's probably a little younger than I am, so I'm not bitter about that. But, you know, good. Good for him. That's good. I hope he's okay. <laughs> yeah. Tell us how you really feel. I, I usually do. Well, you got anything else for today, Mr. Paul? Well, no, as noted, I have two uh, appointments today, yeah. <laughs> which are at different times than I thought. But uh, I will be sending back my little Pixel 3 today. Mm. Uh, I've got that packaged up, ready to roll. I have 
ordered, uh, I'm sorry, I have uh, sent or sent in the information needed to return the other device. Uh, I have until November 5th. I'm going to hold on to it for a little while, but just for whatever yeah. it's worth, I've actually switched back to the Pixel 2 XL uh, for my daily use phone. Um, I've ordered, by the way, a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus after cool. doing some research about the Note 9. Trying to do, They have a gold color you can get off the website that looks mm. actually really nice, by the way. Um, you know, and I'll look at the OneNote 6. I, I pre uh, 6 plus, uh, 60. I pre-ordered a an iPhone uh, 10R. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the reviews on yeah, that. Yeah, they're pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a little mixed. I mean, yeah. um, the bezel's thicker apparently because they need a backlight for LCD. Right. The quality of the screen is, you know, good but not amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the camera obviously is an uh, in, in area to kind of, for me anyway, to kind of consider because it's a single lens deal, not the dual lens that you have right. on the XS. Um, but, you know, the colors are nice. I mean, the form factor is kind of a happy Goldilocks size. You know, it's kind mm-hmm. of between the XS and the XS Max. That's kind of interesting. Um, and, you know, as I noted yesterday, um, you probably didn't pay too much attention to this, but I had kind of a little mini rant thing about the, uh, the Pixel oh, I didn't 3 even, didn't even notice. Yeah, it, it happened quick, and it just it ended, so you might not have even noticed. But Was that on um, Twitter? Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, what part of it is. So... Uh, <laughs> um, you know, the, the truth is, I, I should write about this. You know, it, when, when it comes down to platforms, I mean, there's always been this like Mac versus PC or, you know, whatever. Honestly, these days, iOS to Android, if you're right, when you think about the fact that you're running all the same apps, it really, I, you, picking a platform these days, mm-hmm. I don't know. There, there are advantages to Android, of course. I think they're well understood. There are people who just don't like Apple too or whatever, but... There's something about iOS where uh, an iPhone in particular where the thing is reliable, it's stable, the performance is fantastic. I get to run all those Google apps and services and the Microsoft apps and services mm-hmm. that I want. No, I don't get the deep OS integration stuff, but it doesn't even really matter, you know? Um, I, there's a really good case to be made for the iPhone, and uh, yeah. I get a lot of pushback from, uh, you know, from people in certain ways about that, of course. Um, but it is something I'll, I'm going to seriously consider um, – you know, the iPhone XR that I pre-ordered is was eight hundred and fifty dollars. The Samsung Galaxy S nine I ordered is eight hundred and fifty dollars. You know, mm-hmm. these things are comparable um, price wise. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. Anyway, it's just obviously I'm obsessing over this. So there's honestly no rush <laughs> when you think about it. It doesn't really matter. I mean, mm-hmm. I I could just use this thing. Like my wife said to me, you know, you, you're kind of dicking around with all these phones, like. Why don't you just keep using your phone? <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like, I don't really have a great answer to that. Um, can I write about phones? I don't know. I like phones. I, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. There was a, a story making its round yesterday that where Samsung had talked about how they figured out how to put like cameras behind the glass and yeah. other sensors, which is great. Don't get me wrong. I, that's very good technology. It's going to get us to that level of where the whole screen is or the whole phone is just a screen. There's no notch, which is great. Yep. But the, the problem is, is this first couple early adopters are going to pay a whole bunch more money for, yeah, what, 3% more screen real estate, maybe 5% in an area that you can't use anyways. Don't get me wrong. I, I would right. love this, but it's, it's like we're kind of there. Like the phone is 95% screen. They're all yeah. just kind of the same. They're all a little bit boring. And so now it just kind of comes down to whatever else they're, I, going between the 2XL and the 3XL is kind of a non-event, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I have no problem with the small bezels on a Samsung Galaxy S8, S9, Note yep. 9, or on the Pixel 2XL. I, I, it looks, there's a symmetricalness to it. Mm-hmm. When you watch it in landscape, if you're going to watch a video, there's no weird cutoff thing or whatever. It, the stereo speakers work fine. Um, I think it's fine. You know, I, I don't mind the small notches, you know, the I, uh, the OneNote 6, mm-hmm. uh, the 6T especially. Even the iPhone, honestly, at this point, I mean, based on this bucktooth monstrosity, it's sitting in front of me. <laughs> like, you know, I, the iPhone, I, I complained about the iPhone, at, you know, 10 notch for like over a year now. And I look at this thing and it's like, what was I complaining about again? Yeah. <laughs> like it could get so much worse. Yep. You know, it shouldn't, but it, it did. So, gravy. Well, folks, that wraps it up for today. We should be back here tomorrow, provided there's no Windows updates or anything else impeding that or Paul's at uh, wrong appointment times. But thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you back tomorrow.